going on YouTube? This is Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. I'm coming at you guys today with a very special video I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm shining some light on a topic that there's a thousand of these videos on YouTube, but I want to make mine special and different. I really want to touch up on this subject on certain parts of it that's really overlooked. To start this video off, let me talk about a comment I received. I had a video where I had a comment where a guy said, huge water changes are bad for the aquarium. You shouldn't do those. They'll kill your fish. I never do more than a 10% water change. I wouldn't recommend doing, having anyone do a large water change. Now, why did he say that? Why some people stand by huge water changes when you have people with discus, African cichlids, which are heavily stocked fish and very delicate fish doing huge water changes? Well, what are they trying to accomplish by that? They're trying to remove the toxins from the water and replenish them with fresh water. Why do some people do a bare minimum of 10% water changes on the aquarium? Is it possible for a water change to hurt your fish? Yes, it very well is. And we're going to dive into that. We're also going to talk about how it happens in nature. Some people do small water changes because they want to make bare minimum impact and change on their aquarium. Another reason people do bare minimum water changes like me is because of their well water. What is a water change in nature? In nature, you have a season where it's very dry. All the canals, streams, and rivers have shrunk and decreased in size and completely vanished off the map. Fish are concentrated to deepest parts of rivers now. But then again, you have a rainy season return. When precipitation returns, that refills the rivers. Rain is basically RDI water. It's evaporated water. It has no minerals in it or very little. RDI water is raining down from the sky and refilling the river basins. Prime example is the Amazon River. What this does is it dilutes the toxins in the water. How we do a water change in the home aquarium should and shouldn't mimic nature, all depending on what you're trying to do. If you have an African cichlid tank, you want to introduce fresh, clean rain, RDI water. If you have a planet tank, sometimes people like to go RDI. That way they can mix their own fertilizers, either it be liquid or AP version, that way they have an exact measurement of fertilizers going in their aquarium. But, a water change can be a double-edged sword. And what I mean by that is, people have different types of taps. You can have a private well, which can either be shallow or artesian, or you can have city water that has chlorines in it, and it's already pre-treated for you. City water is good. It's clean. It's reliable. You can go online and get an exact reading of what's in your water. To break this down, the point of a water change is to remove polluted water in our aquariums and replace it with clean, healthy water. But we have to make sure the source of our water is safe for our aquarium fish. There's many different types of water parameters in nature. There's many different types of habitats. And the same applies to our own home aquarium. Our tap water can vary, either be artesian well, shallow well, or city water. You can have hard water, you can have soft water, you can have water that is full of minerals, you can have water that's full of nitrates, or you can have water that is perfect conditions for African cichlids or even saltwater fish. The key thing is, we have to go to the local fish store. We have to buy a master test kit. You can't look with the naked eye and tell what's in the water. TDS meters are awesome as well. If we can find out exactly what's in our water, we can either A, plan a habitat that is mimicking our water parameters or buffer our water parameters and create the habitat that we want to achieve in our own aquarium. We all want to bring that piece of nature home to us, but let's not put the wagon before the horse. Let's think about this, guys. Be realistic. Have a plan before you start anything. Do your research. And my advice 
is provide a realistic habitat for your fish and don't put yourself before your aquarium inhabitants. If you design an aquarium that will fit the needs of your fish, it will be rewarding. You'll have more success. If you design a habitat for your own aesthetic values and sacrificing your fish's needs, the end result could be bad. So guys, experiment with water change, have fun, leave your thoughts and comments in the section below. If you guys want to see other videos, check these out right here. This video right here is going to be on Luigia palustris. I need to get rid of this plant. I have so much of this, I don't even know what to do with it. Contact me if you need it. Comment, rate, and subscribe, guys. I hope you liked this video. I'll see you next week. Later.